to talk about this act of scanning. Uh, it's, it's another thing. Um, so yeah, freezing, maybe I'll talk about that as a form of art later, but now I'll talk about scanning. And it's written here as a primarily, primary artistic act. It's, it's, it's a big statement. It's sort of, it's, it's a big flag, you know, you wave on parliament building. Scanning is a primary artistic act. But if, if, if you start thinking, you know, if, if you step out of a device, like, you know, scanning, it's, it means device. But if you start thinking about scanning, like this mental capacity, you look around the world, you scan, or you look inside of your memory, you scan your memory. I mean, then you realize, ah, there is something to that. But okay, this is, this is sort of extreme end of how I see scanning. Because in fact, for me, this is more interesting than, than playing with devices, but sort of 99% of what I'm, going to talk about is actually playing with devices. So let me see. The next slide is, okay, so typical stuff, you know, who is the Gililas who is doing presentations? So this Gililas, not only is like PhD father of Jan Glockner who is connected here, whatever it means, it sounds funny, but I also teach in, in Cologne, in the Academy of Media Arts. And one sort of one step sideways, uh, why I, I'm doing it at 17.30 or 18.30 Riga time, because I'm in admissions commission at, uh, at my school, at Academy of Media Arts uh, in Cologne. Admissions commission meaning, you know, we're looking at portfolios of the students and taking or not taking. Uh, so, and I was surprised how, how few people from like Baltics are applying. Because it's it's actually it's it's damn good school, uh, yeah, for many reasons. But think about it, apply. So that's my sales pitch. It's a good school. It doesn't cost anything. School pays you seven thousand euros to to do your artworks. So plus, it's a lot of freedom. It's not a private school. It's public school. It's very competitive. Because uh, this year, 365 people apply, and we will take about 30. So it's um, it's how many? It's like 12. From 12, we take one, or from 13, we take one, something like that. But anyway, so Google the school. I won't spend much time about the school. There is animation. There are other areas, but you know, maybe it's not that interesting. So uh, I'm also somehow strangely connected to the Vilnius Art Academy, primarily because they really like location. Uh, because uh, Vilnius Art Academy is in the, in the center, in the downtown of Vilnius. It's, it's a very nice place. And, and plus they have dormitories. So if I go to Vilnius, I stay there. Otherwise, I don't have a place to stay. But to get the deal, I also have to sort of do a little bit of teaching. So I'm also there doing visiting sort of teaching. It's also a very interesting school. And I could also recommend if you have to do Erasmus exchange, uh, it's a nice school because, because it has a good department, photography and media, which is extremely open. Uh, you can do anything. And if, if this apparatus art, uh, if that rings a bell, you know, art done with, with, with devices or just letting devices do things or, you know, just observing device doing art or just or, or, or programming device or doing a, any other crazy stuff, performances, that sort of fits in this department. So photography and media art department is the place Then very few people do photography or media art. For the most part, it's really playing. It's writing concepts. It's very popular. If you're into like research, this is the place. So I recommend you to come for Erasmus Exchange. Then, you know, you'll see it. So, okay. Now, ah, it's another example. Yes, they have animation, but I'm not talking about that because it's probably not interesting for you. Another thing, if you have any questions, you can you can ask at any time. You can really interrupt and ask. You can write, but then I won't see it because I only see my screen. So you can write, you can you can ask, or you can you can write an email to me later. 
Anyway, okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, one few sentences, what I was doing before, because I, I'm not a teacher all my life. I, I had life before becoming a teacher. And, uh, yes, before becoming a teacher, I was working at Disney uh, as an animator, doing silly little Disney animations. And before Disney, I was doing special effects for some Hollywood films, and before that, doing some games in the same sort of area, Los Angeles, California. Yeah, so, yeah, but, but okay, that's sort of going backwards. Uh, I, I ended up being teacher not because I couldn't do anything else, which is sometimes sad case of becoming a teacher. I actually became sick and tired of being in the commercial production world. I'm just, I think I'm not strong enough or asking too many questions, you know, why are we doing this or why we chose this sort of aesthetic shape or, you know, why Chicken Little says this phrase. So it becomes a bit cumbersome and a, a bit too tiresome, you know, when, 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 when you're in situation, think about it. Production houses are like, like, like boat with a lot of, a lot of roars and if you're out of a sink if you start asking questions you sort of you you create a trouble so uh, i managed not to create a trouble it was an inner trouble i asked sort of quietly questions to myself without upsetting the boat but then at a certain point just you know i cannot take it any longer i have to go um but this is not typical this is anomaly because most of the people at disney are really happy people and Disney always emphasizes his happiness. And they always ask, how are you doing? You know, are you, is everything okay? Do you need, you know, stuff? Well, that maybe it's not that interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, part of the problem, uh, part of the problem was before, because before jumping into commercial production, I was an art student. For very many years, uh, I think for like 11 years, I was in university, which tells you something. I mean, you, you, have to, you have to be suspicious about the student who stays in university for 11 years. And that was me. Well, I changed universities. I did like six years in Vilnius Art Academy, then went to United States and did five years in Ohio State University. Started with Master of Fine Arts, dragged my feet as long as possible, two years stretched into three years, and then started PhD and then got tired of PhD and went to do this production thing. And then in production thing, they realized, oh, no, 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 money are good, but you know, I prefer university environment. So yeah, but you cannot be a student again, so you have to become a teacher. So I became a teacher. So that's little biographical thing and this is yeah because we're doing it i mean ideally i don't do this silly talks i prefer to like really take equipment and do something with it get hands on and sort of shake the thing and see what comes out we cannot do it but you know and that's why crossover we, we cannot use these scanners and these scanners are used with students that's why I put the pictures. It's like, you know, like uh, usual suspects. I know this guy, I know that guy, I know. But you can write down if you're interested, you know, like Leica. A Leica uh, I could bring next time I come to, because I think I brought it before. I think I brought it to Liepai. Yes, definitely. And I have an example. I have examples. Later on, I'll show your colleagues who did uh, workshop with me with Leica scanner. And Einscan Pro, another type of scanner. I'll give you a little bit of technical talk because, yeah, because we have to talk a little bit about technology when it comes to scanning. And maybe it's interesting for technicians in MP Lab. Maybe you'll hit the jackpot and get some money so you can buy things. And if you want to buy, I recommend like a BLK 360 and actually Einscan Pro second version which i already have and then you know uh really it's for people who are interested in getting things done so you can write down what else do you do 
what software do you use and um, yes and then you use these kind of types of software uh, and I wrote for most part commercial sorry uh, but it's it's strangely it's sort of luringly commercial luringly means it's free for the students it lures you in to use and then uh, but there are some others, Mesh Lab, and for example. And what do they do? I mean, briefly, I won't go into because when you scan stuff, you have to. What do you do? It sits in the in the scanner, right? You have to take it out and do something with with, with data. So taking out uh, it also is not easy. So Recap Pro is like a bridge. This first one, like a bridge, it takes data out, and then you can do things to that and but i'll i'll tell about technique really i'll go on and talk about it what is sort of laser scanner versus photogrammetry stuff like that but then there are also artistic aspects you know what do you do to that and and i also have examples of what people do uh with scanners as a form of artistic expression uh, and you know unreal engine these are uh, sort of real-time interactive platforms if you want some interaction if you want just like a film or animation there are like a whole bunch of other but okay i'll i'll talk about that later uh uh what the hell is this slide <laughs> i'm sorry guys this is a wrong slide from somewhere uh but okay uh, i remember this is a slide this this is from Totally different thing. This is about animation. Why people do animation? It's sort of it's, and I collect these things. You know why people choose to become an artist? You know motivational path, so to speak. And this is, I, I, I where did they find it? I, I don't know YouTube or somewhere. It's about the guy who explains why he became an animator because the fear of being rejected. For me, it was striking because I heard so many different motivational routes, you know, like, okay, I'm interested to explore the world or I want to express myself. I want this and that. And this guy's like, we are afraid of being rejected. So we spend time doing hobbies like animation. So you lock yourself, which is safe. You know, you don't engage. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't fight this uh, relation relational battles with other persons so you don't lose anything but you do animation so i hope this is not the path you choose or not the motivation uh, but okay so let be it um, now back on track uh yes scanning uh how do you do scanning so you can do scanning in many different ways the simplest and cheapest one is so-called photogrammetry. Uh, yeah, so you take a lot of pictures of something, right? Um, and everybody is taking pictures for Instagram for God knows what. And you can take pictures with your with your uh, mobile phone, a smartphone, because phones are really good quality. They have pretty good quality cameras, so that quality camera is good enough. So you can take multiple pictures and then the smart software extracts, uh, extracts the object from the pictures. And by extraction, I mean, it's not like extracting tooth. It's also virtual. It, it extracts into the computer software, but it creates this 3D object, which in fact, later you can print and have as a tangible sort of practical molecular or atomic real object. But okay, this is next step. One thing, it's, yeah, and I do this thing with students and uh, um, there is a bit of a trouble in the photogrammetry because, because you can do it two ways. One way, this regular way, you have an object, like ontological object, like, you know, you can, you can, you can, tell what it is it's it's the thing you know it's that it's the vase or it's the sculpture and it's the object and you walk around the object you take the pictures from everywhere and you have this sort of ontological entity but if you want to do something else then you end up having this mess 
which is hard to identify, which is also very interesting. It's a bit like sort of goulash of floating shapes and colors. And especially if you try to do the object which you cannot walk around, you sort of, you go in the city and take, take something, random pictures, and then and what happens then you get a lot of errors. And, and here is the thing, uh, because the, the program is tuned to this concrete object extraction, then it, then it hits this tumble roadblock or something when it cannot sort of extract properly, two things happen. Uh, either if, if it's a sort of higher end program, it sort of shuts down or it just gives you mess, which for me, it's quite interesting. Uh, I'll show you some examples later, but uh, it's, it's also you have to, what you have to keep in mind, roughly speaking, uh, you're talking about tools which are not primarily intended for artist usage. It's think about the car, right? Car is device which meant to transport. Well, car now is different. They talk about experience. I mean, but if, if you just go back in time and, you know, first car and forget the status symbol, it just takes, it's a device which takes you from point A to point B. Uh, okay, so if you try to do art with car, uh, you could do, but then you have to really think from point of view of the car, what is, and then you try to conceptualize either the travel, you know, then, then you end up having something like a road movie maybe, or something else, or leaving tracks on the desert and, you know, or you can try to tweak the car if you're good at that and, and sort of the car put like square wheels or I, I don't know, you know, just put smaller wheel and then the, the driving becomes artistic driving. But the thing is, the thing, the scanner is very, very hard to intervene to sort of, we try it, we put some things over the scanner, uh, but because it's not intended for artistic usage, it's, it's not uh, comfortable with error or it's not, uh, it has, low tolerance to the error. But anyway, I'll keep on moving. Yeah, this is photogrammetry, I won't play it because this is, what is this? This is like 10 minutes or something, but you can look at it yourself because the photogrammetry videos are abundant and uh, algorithms which extract the image are pretty similar from one program to another and they explain so I, I won't bother really going into this boring stuff. oh no let's not go into the boring stuff and then another boring it's, it's like a whole bunch of software I, I do recommend you for those of you who like to play with who like to play with software you know and uh, if you can see, I don't know, it's all three, all 3dp.com. It has a list of photogrammetry software, which little explanation, you know, free, what output formats, blah, blah, blah. You know, take a look at that, write down the link and, uh, and try it out because most things are free uh, on the top. And they're not too bad. Cold map is quite good. Mushroom is also. I tried them. Um, yes. And then you have this Autodesk recap, which is says for 40, but we're using it for free because it's, it's a free student version. It's also good. It does multiple things. But okay, so how do I move forward? Um, why it doesn't let me move? You're seeing this message because ad or script blocking software is interfering with this page. Uh, it's not good. Okay, so, uh, yeah, to sort of wrap it up, this whole technical part. This is like a scanner, and that's the one I commonly use. But you know why I'm showing this picture? I don't know. It's just show how it looks like. It looks very cool. Uh, so, uh, think about it. Another one I'm using is this Einscan Pro 2. 
and it's very good at shoes. <laughs> it also is good at humans, uh, and it does really striking sort of how to say it. it it's it's really it's very strange because. It, it sounds very trivial because we all know, you know, you scan the person and then, you know, you have a person in, in 3D. But I did some scans with students and then you see it, the person in 3D and it's like, there's something, you know, there's really something striking. Uh, but maybe it's just me. But okay, this, this device is good uh, at dragging real objects into the computer. And then you can do whatever you want with these objects. Uh, the milk scanner is the funny performative uh, aspect of scanning. I could show, I don't know if you see, oh, I think you, you want to hear the, I forgot to check the sound. And uh, yeah, because I forgot to check the sound when I started the, the sharing. Um, one second. You don't hear the sound, right? No, no, there's no sound. Okay, good. Because it's a sort of launch music uh, in the background. But Friedrich Kirchner, uh, he came to Kaheim because, oh, you cannot see it well either. He does this performative action, you know, using, but it illustrates how you, you can scan things without the budget. And in essence, it's a photogrammetry because, uh, because, there is a camera on top, and then he uses milk as the mask, in fact. And then you see, you see here, you see this little robot in the middle, right? And then he puts the milk, and the level of the milk goes up, so silhouette line also changes. So for every spoon of milk, he extracts the silhouette line as a curve. And then with every step curve changes, and then he has this his sort of collection of curves, right? And then he extracts from collection of curves and creates this silly robot. I mean, there is a big step because this is what you see, right? Looks like a Lego piece because uh, every step is a bit big and yes, and then that's why it looks rough. And then boom, smoothed up. I don't know, whatever. So, uh, yes, uh, Friedrich Kirchner, which is totally misspelled here, uh, is a guy who does, uh, he went to New York to, the, I think, I-beam or, or some, somewhere when he did this uh, scanning people in the pool, performative action. So why I'm bringing that up, uh, it's okay. So it's relationship with a device. What can you do? You know, you can, you can really focus on the result, what device does. You can focus on the errors, you know, like devices failing and then I'm getting errors and errors are interesting because they signify something, our relationship with technology or some other metaphorical meanings of what it is to fail. And on top of that, you can perform. You can do performance actually with, with a technology and that's what he's doing, but it's, it's a bit, uh, modest it doesn't doesn't call it performance. It's like, oh yeah, I, I do cheap scanners, but come on, this is performance. Um, so now uh, going into into sort of apparatus kunst, how it's called in Germany, because I think it's to a certain extent uh, important or perhaps even interesting for MP lab because MP lab was also edge when it comes to technologies. And so sonar is very interesting technology underused in art because, because and it, 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 I have a personal story with sonar because I wanted to buy sonar for KM. I thought, you know, we can, we can play with sonar. I wrote to the company, you know, how much it would cost can, can we get academic discount? And the guy really, sort of laugh at me because he said, you cannot use it outside. You have to be underwater. And it's like, oh shit, I should have done research before. But yes, if sonar needs water to transmit the signal and in this focused fashion, because if you pull out of the water, it's just too diffuse. You won't be able to get things out. But yeah, so sonar failed. 
but it's interesting device. Uh, and what else does it say? It uses echoes. So for me, it's it's also quite interesting, sort of this romantic metaphor of echo. Uh, okay, so sonar. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, yes, sonar is using for many uh, human body related issues, and it's a medical device to to a large extent. It's it's yeah, it's a military device uh, using for submarines or some others, but it's also medical, checking out what's inside your belly or in some other part of your body. Uh, so, but it's an image creating device, and I'm also interested because it is in a way the scanner. It sort of scans environment and reports to you its findings. So it reports like you know, oh, I see, I see baby there. Yes. Um, another type of scanner is infrared scanner, and uh, I took the picture in India. Then I landed uh, some time ago, two years ago, I think, in Calcutta. No, it was Delhi, New Delhi, in airport. It was a scanner scanning. I don't know why they scan, maybe for health reasons, but it's also interesting. I thought you know, it's it's also sending things out, getting something in the return, extracting information and reporting to everybody. So, because it reports the, the temperature of the surface it detects. So, my head was pretty cool, shoulders are uh, sweating. And I had this thing on the belly, how do you call this, tasha? This sort of tasha, so it's cool. And, uh, you know. We can we can see my sort of status at the landing. Uh, there are other types, you know. It's it's similar thing. Uh, it, it's also interesting from graphical point of view. I mean, there are philosophical aspects. You know, what are we seeing? Because because in in general, image deals with representation, and representation deals with value system and in most cases representation of human is like optical you know we see the face we see eyes this is also optical but different we don't see eyes we see sort of temperature flashes so how do you in identity of person changes we don't see sort of face but we see different type of identity so think about it if you live in the world where the only information is this right uh so how do you identify people? Uh, or, you know, how do you see, oh, this is my friend. This is my mother. Uh, that, that's central because you cannot see the face. You're so used to optical features, but there are so many other things, smells and sounds. Anyway, uh, so it, it's interesting. Uh, yes, CAT scan is a typical interventive uh, sort of thing. Which is uh, which is quite interesting because uh, the way it does it, it slices you like salami virtually. Because it just slices every few millimeters and then uh, and then connects to the software. So then you get this internal, I mean, yes, internal representation of of your body. I think in this case, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? It's, it uses X-ray. Ba -ba -bam, kind of. There is more interesting thing now, which uh, yeah, it's another example of the scanner. And I'm I'm giving this example just to so you can think about this semantic of scanning. You know the, the range, the, the range of language of of scanning. You can you know you can use this or that, and you can just think about social environment. It's being perform it you, you, you can think about other aspects not just poetical but also political maybe um yeah that's a scanner to catch the the trespassers this is the z portal scanner at san isidro border crossing it's a it's a border crossing between san diego and tijuana mexico so they trying to find the people who try to sneak in illegally and this is i don't know the technology the z portal scanner uh hopefully it's not x-ray because uh, it was a scandal in germany uh well it's a long scandal because in the dr times soviet times 
uh, East Germany was using this high intensity X-ray scanner, which was harming everybody who were passing, uh, just to you know see if there is no one hiding to escape to West Germany. Uh, Another type of thing is acoustic. Uh, it's not exactly a scanner, but it's a microphone. Uh, it's a microphone which is interesting microphone. And I recommend for the sound people try to use that to do this field recording because it, it does, it's almost like a spy device, but, uh, but you can use for artistic purposes it as well. It, what it does, it, it does this uh, pointed, Recording, uh, you know, you can you can choose something and it's it extracts the dialogue or extracts the sound. Um, yes, uh, this is I wouldn't say comic release, but also type of you know probably scanning which we never think about. It's scanning with your eyes, it's sort of looking at the horizon or it's trying to find something because. When you try to find something, and I mentioned this extended version of scanning, when you try to find something, you know, you look and try to recognize, you scan environment for something. It's the same trying to remember. You scan your brain for something, you know, what, what was the name of that? But this is, as I said, this is sort of extended versions. Very interesting type of scanner, very scary and sinister. It's a polygraph. It's... I, I wrote here a scanner of truth because polygraph is supposed to tell you if person is lying or not. So in fact, it is scanning for truth or lies. It's also interesting, you know, like to, to think about polygraph as, as equipment of family of scanners. You know, it's, we have like a BLK, this innocent little device, and then we have a polygraph, which is genetically related but related how, I mean, this is another thing. It doesn't use laser. It uses some system of signals. And this is, for most part, very simple. Because if you see, is what? It's, it's a blood pulse, right? Uh, not blood uh, pressure, because it, it measures blood pressure. And at the tip of the finger, I don't know what is that. It's not an oxygen level, something else. So it uses for... It uses few inputs from your body, which could be absolutely misleading, but then it sort of sums it up and, you know, mysteriously comes out, you lying or you telling the truth. And uh, I was surprised. Uh, but you should, if, if you're interested, if you want to do artistic research, I think polygraph is a very interesting device because, because a lot of, livelihoods depended on on it a lot of people were convinced or uh, condemned or exonerated based on polygraph and you know what exactly this this device is doing god knows you know some people are nervous from birth and they would always fail polygraph and some some people are very cool they you know they don't 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 blink when, when they lie so they can pass the polygraph so, but it was, uh, I think in like 70s or 60s, it was very popular. It's like it, it, no, nobody would question. I think now it went to the second sort of, it, it's, it's, if it's not fully retired, people don't talk about polygraphs so much anymore as a, as a last instance of, of truth. Uh, but it was, it was, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, I think I'm missing one slide I wanted to talk about because now I'm jumping into artistic projects done with scanner. Um, let me see if I. Um, but now I have to. I have to. I have to play the video. One second. Um, we can do a short break because I need to stop share and then uh, share again. Uh, because I forgot to switch on sound. So if you have any questions now, ask because I'm re, 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 re running. Um, so no questions means either people are dead, 
they are disconnected. They cannot hear me or they... No, I, I wrote one, but I know I'm lacking behind like 25 seconds or something. Oh, okay. Uh, so, the, ah, this one was missing. How come this one was missing? Okay, I'll show this one because I wanted to talk about that one. Um, uh, wait a minute. I have to see what you wrote. Uh, no, I, I can say it because ah. I can't, it doesn't show up. But have you done ultrasonic scanning? No, I haven't done ultrasonic scanning uh, because... What device should I use? Ultrasound or? Yeah, I mean, there are medical ones and there are also ones that you use for material testing for micro cast iron pieces yeah. or when aluminum aeronautical yeah. stuff. I, I tell you one thing. It, that there is this department of ultrasonic material testing in Kaunas Technical University. And I went to see, and I, I wanted to sort of use their device, but uh, they said it's impossible because it's they exactly do that. What they are doing there, you know, these oil tanks, the big drums for oil, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't know how many cubic meters in huge oil tanks. Uh, so, okay, they rust, apparently, and it's very hard to check the, the, the rust, the creases. So they use this ultrasonic device, which uh, Kaunas Technical University was developing to check on the status of this oil, huge oil drum. So I ask if I, and they absolutely say, no, this is, you know, in, in a sense, what they said, they said is like no place for, artistic praxis because you know you guys are you guys are stupid <laughs> um and you know you break things yeah it was no it was not so negative it was positive but it, it felt like they occupied they concerned parents they concerned parents looking at the child and you know this this me like a child they would break this this very expensive device um <laughs> But yeah, I, I, yeah, it would be possible. Now I'm thinking, you know, all those medical ultrasound devices, of course you can get them, not that expensive. You know, and every artist, every, every doctor practice almost has it. You can really, but it, it really, it, it ends up being the question of artistic imagination. How would you use it? You know, which capacity? Do, do you want to scan something or you want to perform the scanning act or, or both, you know? Yeah. But okay. Um, goodness, we saw behind the time um, because I have to really stop at, 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 at a certain time. Uh, yeah, you're sharing screen. Let's see. Uh, slideshow. Let me, let me do the slideshow from current slide. So what I wanted to I, I don't know. It's, it's, for me, it's this deja vu moment. Did I speak about this device in Liepaja? Maybe I did, or maybe I didn't. Because it's a new uh, MRI. It's not a CAT scan. It's a magnetic resonance. So it's not using X-ray, but it sort of activates the hydrogen atoms in you. To the degree they start emitting radio signals. So for me, it was like this, this poetical metaphor of you know, person becomes the radio station. You know, they stuck you into that donut and it, it activates your hydrogen atoms to the degree they start to broadcast, you know, radio signals. And then based on the intensity, a uh, device would know if there is a lot of hydrogen or not. And based on that, it sort of, it creates the image. So the bone has less hydrogen, so it would, have different color than let's say you know blood which has which is fluid so it's it's quite interesting from but really purely from this poetic metaphor it's almost like performance you know I, i'm becoming a radio station i'm broadcasting like every atom in my body starts to broadcast and you can, anyway so and it looks 
Doesn't it look cool, Jan? This huge donut with, with very soft colors. It looks very friendly, but I'm sure a lot of artists worked on the design to look at as friendly as possible because it's very loud. It's very sort of, yes, it's not pleasant to be in that donut. But look at the colors. It looks extremely pleasant. Um, yeah. I like the music. Huh? Yes. Um, this one we saw. Uh, ta -da. Yeah, forensic architecture, really briefly. I mean, for you to remember, uh, now we're talking really art. Even though these guys see themselves as political action, but there is this group in, uh, in London and they are related to University of London and Goldsmiths. Uh, and they use scanning devices to extract the truth, so to speak, you know? And it's for me like, okay, it's new incarnation of polygraph to some extent, because I don't know if you can, I cannot hear anything myself. I cannot hear, you cannot hear, but maybe there is no sound. That's another thing. Ah, maybe there is no sound. So, okay, but it explains in the subtitles. You can, you can read subtitles, I suppose. So it's also interesting because Goldsmith is an art school. Well, it has other programs, but it's known for like art and technology meetup place. And these guys, forensic architecture, they were like artists. But they, they, they became like a lawyer trying to convince using the scanner. Because they used the scanner to extract the information of this explosion. And uh, they, I don't remember what exactly they proved with this, but they proved something, you know, what sort of explosive device was there. And funny thing is, it's, it's not a law firm. It's a, it's an artist group called Forensic Architecture. Um, and yeah, this one has sound, I believe. This is one of the world's most notorious prisons. There are almost no pictures of its exterior and none from inside. Do you hear the sound? And what happens within its walls? Yes, yes, we hear the sound. Okay until now. We've devised a unique way of revealing what life is like inside a torture prison. And we've done it by talking to people who were there and have survived its horrors. It's a long video I recommend to look. I recommend to really check forensic architecture if you haven't seen. In essence, what they did here, and it's actually very nice. Uh, when you think about scanning, what, what they, they invited people who will think about this. Let's say there is a place uh, which doesn't have information about but there are people who saw it so forensic architecture group found these people and by talking to them and sort of drawing to them they reconstructed so not using a device but using memory of people uh, and that's a nice thing i think that's really sort of nice thing they, and this in a way very humane you talk to the person and you draw something what person says and then you talk to another person who was maybe behind the corner and it adds information what's you know behind the corner and you add it add 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 and then uh, I wanted to do a workshop like that you know on this evidence but then but then uh, funny enough there is uh, this master student in Vilnius she she deals with memory and reconstruction uh, yes in Vilnius Art Academy it's quite interesting. And she does theater projects uh, with actors who reenact coming back from this forgotten island and trying to reconstruct. So memory and reconstruction, it's interesting subject and it's related to this idea of scanning. Uh, now, 
going to sort of scanning mainstream art, which is enchanting and beautiful, but this is what sort of scan art tends to look like in most cases. And I'll tell you why. There is another group in London called Scan Lab, and they do a lot of scan projects. So to remember, there is forensic architecture and Scan Lab. And Scan Lab does aesthetic projects for most part. Okay, so it goes on and on and on. It's quite sort of in itself, it's very impressive the way they do it. And, um, There's also a lot of applied thing, like, for example, you know, architectural visualization, it's one thing. When, when, when you, have a, you have certain space and they want to add something, so you scan the space and then, you know, use it to preview something. One thing, another thing is for gallery space, people use that because you can scan gallery space easily and then add things and, you know, imagine how it looks like. So it, it's, it also is very applied, not just purely artistic, but it's also very applied. You can, you can use it for multiple purposes. Um, yes, now I'm, I'm going to ex expand a little bit on this idea of scanning. And uh, uh, because I talk about this Friedrich Kirchner, with his milk scanner, and it's, if you think it's in this German tradition of inventing things, which is in a way Renaissance Italian tradition, but okay, Dürer, Dürer tried many devices to depict what he saw, which is very interesting. Uh, I'm not ex entirely sure. I think Jan knows more, <laughs> maybe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if, if Dürer invented that. Or no. He, or he was using what it was already there available. Okay, so you, you knew the answer, I was sure. But uh, in his book, Four Books of Measurement, it's, it, you can find quite interesting devices, which in a way are scanning devices, because you look at the thing, and not just look at the thing, there is one step further. You have some apparatus, which sort of makes it more objective depiction of the I'm not entirely sure how this thing functions but I just show it illustration from Durer's book uh, take a look write it down if you're interested do search and if you have to write a research paper maybe you can uh, but Brunelleschi this is very famous example of this uh, what was the name of this uh, young Baptist or was the name of his capella, uh, John Baptist Capella or something in Florence. And uh, he was really doing this sort of scanning and repositioning of the object using the drawn image. And he was comparing image to the original, sort of moving it back and forth and looking at the mirror uh, of the drawing in front of the actual building and then removing the drawing, looking at the building and going back and forth. Uh, because it's out, it's a bit more tricky than the, because it has two holes to reposition. I mean, it has a hole in the build, in the drawing, and it has a hole in the mirror. And so you can really position exactly at the same spot like the actual building. So it's, uh, there are a lot of interesting devices, in fact, from Middle Ages up to 19th century. Uh, and, but that's a little bit different subject, but you know, what's related to the scanning? Um, what is this now? Oh.
Now we're diving a little bit into another thing. Um, so, the thing is, I was talking about devices. This was, this was the game of what it is to be an artist in Renaissance. The largest thing that the Renaissance artist was also the maker. About Giotto, the other thing, like making your own, making your own. I'm sorry. Can you turn off the music? And they can't see. It was like that up until quite recently. When you film something, you need to get the camera. You need to be quiet. But now, suddenly, in the last few years, things have changed. There's an asshole break. We always had that. Now we have an image producing. Corporations at such a big extent, like Google, is probably the biggest image producing entity in history. So there are so many images. It's almost like you need to film them. This is this is a question mark. This is an artistic sort of question because this is a film done entirely by. Oh, you can hear uh, me. Yes, uh, I, because I was talking about devices, and now the thing is, for images you have Google, for scans uh, you still don't have, you could probably extract stuff from uh, Google Street. But well, as an artist, you can think where to. We, we heard absolutely need nothing to from that. Really go and take a picture, and what does it mean? What does it mean to go out and take a picture in 21st century, in sort of century of Facebook, Instagram, Google, or you go and appropriate what it's being used and what is sort of how changes the artistic message in both cases? This is Can you a hear me? example of a usage, not of a device, but of corporation which created the image. And this is... Uh, this is Clement Walla, uh, an artist who uses for glitches in, in Google Earth and then sort of claims that as an artistic object. Uh, another example, it's uh, uh, usage of, again, uh, Google Street View, but sort of feeding it back into the reality. And uh, this is quite interesting because the concept behind it is to, to, to go to places which artists has access to. So sort of if you think about Liepai, you would go to Liepai and find a Google image on, on street, I don't know which street, uh, but you see the person in the Google map and you know the location. So you take the sort of person and snap you take an image of the person and snap in the actual location. Uh, and then these images are all images of people taken from this Google Street View uh, and then snapped in the location which were like they're taken from. Uh, yeah, so that's to a certain extent using scanning. This is also, this is directly related to the scanning. Uh, project by uh, Oslo Art School students, and this is scanning device and uh, and uh, imaging device at the same time because it produces the image as you see, it produces the lights and it scans for Wi-Fi intensity, intensity of Wi-Fi signal. So if their signal is more intense, the whole thing goes up and lights. It's it's a stick with the LED lamps. Right, and then the Wi-Fi signal is high, all the lamps is being illuminated. If Wi signal is low, only the ones on the bottom. And the photography is a time-lapse photography. They sort of go, click, they go, they go, they go, and it's it's just time lapse with a, yeah, 
creates quite nice sort of representation of this invisible Wi-Fi. In this case, it stands Wi-Fi. Um, I have another example of how people use scanner to do films. Um, and this is quite popular these days, and I, I'll, I'll talk to you about a little bit about that. There is one getting famous now, it's Canadian artist Mathilde Lavenet, and she did this film Tropics. I only could find the trailer, I saw in presentation the whole thing. And uh, I, I, I can explain what it is. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a actually, what it is, it's a, it's a multiple, multiple chain of a scans set in Mexico. She was living in, it's a long story, but she found this French community in Mexico. She went there and she wanted to do film about the life of this, I mean, for a couple of centuries, maybe they don't have connection to France, but they, they barely speak French, but they associate them anyway. So she went there, it's in Mexico. And instead of filming, she scanned because it's another thing. It's the, the new scan person. It's, it's a different relationship. It doesn't understand it's a, it's, it's a camera because it looks different. So it's, it acts in a different way and you tell, you know, you, you, you will be unrecognizable. So she was scanning and she was taking, uh, recording the dialogues. And then, and then she created this film uh, where the camera moves through the scan because then she put the scans together and, you know, in 3D program and you put camera, so on and so forth. Um, it's interesting because it's a new, it's a new trend now. It's new trend because, uh, because before it was very hard to load all this data in the computer. So it's, it's quite trivial. It's related to the, uh, to the hardware capacities, but now it's possible because when you scale multiple scans, it, it becomes huge really. Uh, so. But now, now you can load it, and then when you load it, you have this extended, sort of extended, how do you call it, salami of, of scans. And then you can put camera and travel, and you, you have a voice, and it's very dreamy, you know, this sort of translucent, dreamlike representation of, of the space. And, you know, it's another thing, if I can show some example. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I have another example of this glacier. It's Dan Holsworth. Uh, he's also a scanning artist. Um, uh, but going back to Le Vene, um, uh, the interesting thing is you have a sense the objects are lit because, I mean, it seems like light is coming from somewhere, but there's actually no light. It's, it's, it's a density of the scan. So the denser areas, you feel like they're more lit, but they're, they're closer to the scanner. So scanner is this virtual emitter of light and then recorder. It's, it's quite, philosophically speaking, it's quite interesting because you have more information when you close it to the scanner and then there are gaps and there are like shadows, which are not shadows, but scanner couldn't see things. So yeah, what happens, you realize you, you sort of, you, you project your understanding of reality, sort of common sense understanding. Common sense meaning we all grew up in the in the sunlight, right? I mean, but and, and we project this is like you know must be lit, must be sun somewhere, but the thing is totally different. And then you realize no, it's 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 wrong, it's false, but it's very accurate, so it cannot lie. And then it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting because you're always surprised. You see this thing and it's like, it, on, on one hand, yes, it, it's accurate, but on the other hand, it doesn't seem real. So this gap is still excites many viewers. Another one is, uh, uh, I'll tell about this thing after they watch it. It's a glacier. Um, and this is also how can you use the scanner? I mean, you see these translucent properties, but you can also actually 
actually what scientists do, they scan glaciers every year to see how much they shrink. And then you can really do the animation to have a sort of moving of a, of a glacier. Uh, in this case, he does classical thing, meaning slow panoramic camera moves through the scanned landscape. Um, this is, it wins the accolades because it's also quite beautiful uh, and it's very accurate and it still sort of, it still works. But my question is because, my question is because it tend to be similar I mean, all the outcomes tend to be, in a way, aesthetically very similar. It's, yeah, it looks very nice, but, you know, because the, the scanning language, to some degree, is restrictive. You're getting this and only this and not much than that. You can do some stuff like he's doing, he's sort of fading it into black, but it turns out to look this mysterious, melancholic, enchanting, very poetic. Uh, but yeah, what I would really advise, try to find new aesthetics using scanner. Because what I show now is sort of, it's, it's a pinnacle of the scanning art as it is in 2021. But, but I think we on the verge of exhaustion because David Coyola, the Italian artist, also quite famous, the scanning artist, he only uses scanners. He does two things, he does images and he does objects. But objects are like 3D printed things, quite interesting. But it's also, if, if you take a look, it's very similar aesthetics, right? To what we saw before, because what I said, I mean, it's very hard to, okay. I mean, you go to my little humble stuff, which I was doing as an artist, uh, student, art student, thinking about, it's a big gap, it's a big jump, it's 1991, and I, I, I put it there because I thought, wow, I was also thinking about, you know, using scan thing, and was, when I was young, was also fascinated about the idea of person becoming a radio broadcaster. Okay, it's a silly, silly idea, but I have another one, uh, which is a bit more interesting. This one, I think I saw it, I showed it. I'm sure I showed it in Liepaya, but maybe not to you guys. Uh, I did it in, when did I do that? I did it a long time ago, in fact. Uh, I think six years ago or something. I need to check, but I don't remember. But the, the whole idea was very similar than I realized now without knowing, very similar to the forensic architecture. Because it was a place, a psychiatric hospital, and I knew one, one, I knew one patient in the room. And in psychiatric hospital, it was not allowed to take the pictures. It was not allowed to have a smartphone, neither a ruler, nor forks or knives, because it was sort of intensive care unit. But uh, you can have an old-fashioned SMS phone, like old Nokia. And, uh, and this is what I realized, you know, I, I, because I wanted, to, I wanted to do art about that, about living in the psychiatric hospital, but not sort of showing the, showing the, the, the typical graphical aspects of, you know, the, the people with strange faces or sort of people banging, banging head on the, on the wall, because this is, you know, this, uh, the cliche. I was like, okay, I was more interested in about idea actually of restriction and, uh, and uh, smuggling something out. Idea of, you know, there's black hole, we don't know anything about it, right? Because information is not getting out. And the psychiatric hospital was so sort of closed, people get out, but we never come out, sort of, you know, information never comes out. There is no Hawking's radiation from psychiatric hospital. I mean, how do we, and then I was so happy, look, yeah, I, I told to the guy, there's no rulers, but you have cigarettes, right? Yes, uh, they have cigarettes. So then I, I asked him, you know, what do you smoke? And he, he said, Paul Mall Blue. 
So I went, I bought pole mole blue and I measured pole mole blue. So I knew exactly. So then we had unit of measurement. It was pole mole blue. And then it took a few months because, uh, because you have to measure and it's, it's accurate. I reconstructed. This is 3D reconstruction of the room where six patients live. And, and then he was sending me numbers through SMS in Paul Mall blue units. And I was sort of reconstructing sort of, you know, day by day. Because you, can, you, you cannot really do it all the time because uh, guards would come and look through this little window because you see the, there is the door and the window and then guards would come and look. So you have to, you cannot act weirdly because then they would send you into single sort of room. But yeah, so it took time, but then I was quite happy because I put all the measurements into into 3D program and reconstruct it. So it's a scan. It's a scan because it's, it's accurate depiction of the space using device. In this case, Paul Mole Blue cigarette box. And uh, yeah, so it's another example of, I would say, scanning art. And then, okay, I don't know how much time do we have because I have a few examples. Tell me. Maya, uh, we, we still have because time. I don't have watch and I don't have clock. I'm really floating in time. And, and no, no, we, we have 15 minutes, so. I don't Thanks. hear you, Maya, sorry. Uh, why I don't hear you? Because I, I turn sound on. Uh, tell me more. Uh, we have 15 minutes, so we have time. F 15 or, f oh, okay. 50. 50, okay. I have like over hour, but I can shrink it. Because now I, I can show student examples. I can show student examples also using the scanner. The, and this is another story. It's actually, it has lots of stories because it ended up being a performance. <clears throat> um, but you won't see the performance aspect. Why performance? Uh, because it deals with trespassing. Uh, then you want to get something from the space which is restricted, then you either ask permission and wait for the answer or you just go and do it. And then in some cases, like this case has very interesting story uh, for many aspects. It's like, if you just interested in narrative. So it, it's like uh, the planetarium. I don't know what's the proper English word, but you understand the planetarium? It's, it's a strange thing. I think the planetarium is already in English. Yeah, but Latvians understand do you, do you have still planetariums? Yes, we have planetaries. <laughs> we, have, we have plenty of planetaries. <laughs> okay, so this was really crazy place because, uh, I mean, if you look at the picture, not of the building, but next, it's a glory days of Vilnius Planetarium Mass. Glory days when people were going there because when we visited the place, it was empty. It was only like old lady. And we asked, we doing like, we always do the same thing. We say we're doing geological survey because then it's okay. And then we went to talk to the director was even older lady and she was so happy. She made us tea because, and she started to, it was very interesting because she started to really talk. Oh, you know, uh, we are part of Vilnius University, David. They are not interested in us. Nobody comes to visit uh, us. And, and she was really started to complain, like, like we are taking interview or something. Um, but, then, but then I realized it's really she's alone in that building with this another front desk lady. And, and, then, and then we scanned the thing uh, using Trimble scanner. And... Uh, Wait a minute, I'll switch the sound a bit because it's very loud somewhere. Um, and then they scan and there are sort of, at, at, and then they created this uh, image. Image on the bottom is animation done by students using this Trimble scanner and, and, and scanned results. And this is a, this technically university students which was also an interesting thing because these are not art students who participated. 
but uh, uh, another example of the same uh, technical university students, uh, it's more like applied, it's more graphic. Uh, they also were interested in non-realistic representation because the scan on the top, this, on the very top, there's this building, right? this aqua park. It's very popular in Lithuania. They're building them everywhere. I don't know. Because Lithuanians don't have so much water like Latvians do. They really like those aqua parks because in Latvia we have a coast, which is 400, 500 kilometers. In Lithuania is like 50 kilometers. So, but we're really into aqua parks. So this is Vichy Aqua Parkas in Vilnius. And uh, the guy scanned the spiral slide. And then, you know, this was first result, but they decided to aesthetically spice it up to make it sort of more abstract. And you can do it with the scans because you can just reduce the information and connect points in a different way. So they were like running through the JavaScripts and then connecting in a different way and then ended up having whatever. So yeah, uh, there are many possibilities. Um, another example, this is from art school, a Vilnius Art Academy student. and. She used different scanner, I'll show you. And the output was also, output was not the image, but more like space, which is represented through virtual reality helmet. So it's, it's, it's recorded from VR, from virtual reality. So you're inside of this thing, and I'll talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> about VR and scanning, because this is what I'm doing now in, in Cologne. And, uh, and then, then, okay, let's see this. It doesn't have sound, so it's supposed to have sound, but this version doesn't have sound. Uh, but the sound was like uh, technical humming sounds, just to get sense of a space, not sort of techno music, not uh, piano music, just some humming so when you have the helmet on you don't feel you are deaf you know you, you hear something but as i said i don't have it here um, i believe I don't have, no i don't have it okay so uh now about this vr thing uh, which i'll try light on the bit because it became dark. uh okay so uh I was talking about the scanning, scanning, you know, creating the creating the data and then doing something with that data. Uh, but then the output is usually visual uh, in most cases. What I showed was like living on the surface of a screen. Uh, you can print it out. You can have an object. Uh, you can describe it. And I have later on examples, uh, you know, what else scanning could be. But VR is interesting output because of relationship to your body. Because uh, now I'm looking at the screen and there is really no relationship. Uh, you, you can think about, you can think about, you know, this metaphor of window, but it's not correct because behind the window, objects still related to your size, but on the on the screen on on the computer screen it's not really a window i mean everything is relevant in terms of or or irrelevant in most cases to the to, to size of your body you're as a spectator but in vr it becomes an issue because in in vr size really matters you feel, I mean, you feel the presence of the object in front of you and you immediately have relationship to your own size. This is a very strange phenomenon of, of VR because VR, I mean, for all the cheesiness or hype, there's still this visceral connection, to relevance to your own size. You know, you, you're not... I, there are other examples like reading the book you know, size is a rebel. You, re you read the fairy tale and, you know, you read about the dragon and you imagine, but it's, it's different. And VR is like, 
sometimes you feel chills because the thing is like, my goodness gracious, it's so big or, you know, stuff like that. Some Somebody is running into me and that somebody who is humanoid is three meters high. And there are, there are art pieces which deal with that in VR. It's a bit different subject. It's not so much scanning, it's, it's VR, but then it becomes relevant. It's when you output your scan into, into, into which medium you show. So showing in VR, you can really, and this church, for example, uh, was accurate in terms of size. So in VR, it, it, it really felt like it's, you know, 10 meters high or more. Um, so it's 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 interesting thing to explore the scan in in relationship to virtual reality. Um, there is another example uh, done by artist, and uh, I wonder if I can play it. I think I can play it. I think I'm trying to play it. I think I'm playing it. Uh, I think this one doesn't have sound either. Um, but I'll tell you why I'm showing this example. Um, what is happening? Okay, it's almost over. Uh, okay, so this is another example of this artistic output. Uh, so you have a device which produces something, and then you have to use that something. I mean, you have to, I'm telling from the point of view of the artist who is concerned about creating art. So you have this drive to do something, you have a device that produces and then, and then the output. Okay, so what comes out? And in, in many cases, what comes out is very hard to use because of many issues. It's one of the issues is property rights because uh, like a scanner, it's more open, but like Trimble 8, the one I used uh, the technical university, has this proprietary language. So you cannot really use it. And it was extremely hard to get it out. And it's, you know, if you think about translation from one language to another, when you speak two languages, it's much easier. In this case, it's like, but anyway, uh, sort of getting things into some other uh, software is always an issue and it could become very mundane and it could become this typical animator mental block. You know, I really have to drag this thing into 3D package because that's how 3D animators really think. You know, and I'm 3D animator. It was always, okay, how do I get it into you know, Blender or somewhere, because this is the package I do art with. Uh, and then, ooh, there is no way to get into Blender, so I'm stuck. But in this case, they did a bit of a performative screen capture, because what you can do with scan, you can look at the screen. What you cannot do, maybe you cannot convert into the mesh, you cannot get it into Blender, but you can, you can perform on the screen the camera movement, because camera movement was actually without the camera. It was just sort of zooming in real time and then capturing the screen. And some people started to do that, which is quite interesting. It was another artwork. Very interesting. I, I don't have example, but I can tell you. And I did it with, with also Vilnius Art Academy students in NIDA. What they did, they scanned uh, dunes. And uh, then they, 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 they pulled the Dune scans into this Recap Pro program, and then they did live performance, sort of projecting on the wall the scan, traveling through the scan, and talking about experience. It was very, very cool. It was very cinematic, I, I must say, because this going through the real time. So it's also, I'm, I'm telling this, just to avoid the mental blocks, like, you know, there is one way to do it and that's it. There are so many ways to do it. This is sort of one uh, live performance with a scanner or with a scanned. Uh, this, is, this is actually by your colleagues from, from Liepa University. I have a quite few examples. I don't remember names, 
I think the place, the name of place is Roma's Darsh. Maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't. And this is uh, from Yes Maya. You know if it exists. Yes, it, it exists and it's uh, correct, but I don't remember what student made it. Yeah, it was two of them. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's probably closed now because of Corona. I think so it's Paula and uh, Maris Deus. Yes, I think so. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the place, and this is these are the students who never did 3D before, actually. This and it took them, I think, two days to create this, the scanning and then, and then the way they, they did it, it, it was exactly the same, just performing and screen capturing. Uh, but it looks it looks nice, um, and you really have this cinematographic feel because I, I can't really read it as a cinema for me it's like it is like cinema it's quite interesting if you put sound if you put dialogues if you, if you hear people it's very but it's a strange cinematic because this is very nice sort of exiting into into nothing into. so there is also artistic strategies where to start and how to end and this is quite nice uh, ah, this is Williams Jefferson Bricks, uh, who did a promotional role for the Liepaja University. The intensive sound. Oh, what happened? I have to reduce sound of my end a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry because it doesn't really play right. It has a lot of glitches. Glitches are not intended. Uh, glitches are not in the original. Uh, original is smooth with no glitches. I wanted to ask you something now looking, it just now sort of hit me, but let, let us finish. Great, now I have a question to you, because I, I just realized it's, it's, it's sort of, it's the representation of Liepaja University. So in your opinion, what does it tell you? Liepaja University is a place where you can commit the crime? Or? Well, it sounded like a lot of people died there. Yes, <laughs> a lot of people die there. Cool place, come, if you vampire or something. <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, this is a good example of when you have this technical brilliance like, like he had, but then the, if you don't think about the concept or maybe he intentionally thought about the concept, maybe we should give him a credit. Maybe that was intentional to, to, to look at it like there is a thriller or some really, what's the name of a genre, not a horror film, but some combination of psych. Well, this this was a suspense film. Yes, it's a suspense, exactly. So, but it's not bad. I think it attracts people, right? Young people. I think Lipa like... University has this uh, kind of old school conservative image, and this one gives a different kind of perspective as modern and uh, progressive place, maybe. Yes, regressive and progressive at the same time, depressive and sort of. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I have to move on. More examples. That's another one by, uh, I don't even have the names. Bad. But there is one interesting thing, and you can see it about the scanner. Um, and I'll tell you. It's, I mean, you can see it. Uh, you can see the glitch, and it's not glitch in performance of a scanner. It's a glitch in the routine. 
because you can you can see it as a huge person, but um, and they found a way to really do it because okay, so here is here is the story about the scanner. This particular scanner, uh, like a BLK three sixty, does two passes. One pass, the first it takes pictures. It takes three hundred sixty degree picture of the place because it needs the color information. So it takes sort of and patches up into this ball, into the sphere of image. So that's the first pass. After it's done with that, it starts laser scanning. But the thing is, the time passes and sometimes thing changes. And then it's very, very confusing for the scanner. Because for example, in the picture you have person, but then when it's done with the picture and it starts scanning, person walks away. In the picture, there is a person in the point cloud, the, the, the laser scan part, the, the 3D part, there is no person. But we have an image of the person. The color information of the person is there. But person is gone. It's only wall. So what do we do? They just take the image of the person and projects on the wall. So then you have this sort of huge person, which is projection on the wall, which is gone. It's, it becomes quite interesting if you start thinking about to use it, do it on purpose, the people passing and we, we did that, then you have this very strange projections because it, it needs color information to project on the wall. It doesn't know what color wall is because in that picture, the person is where the wall is in the scan. So it takes the, the color information, the, the, the pixel information of the person and pixel by pixel puts on the wall. That's quite interesting. Um, yes, but let's see what else. Liepai University students. Oh, these, these are my students now. Uh, these are Kai. It's a, a, again the suspense format. Um, this is also screen capture because it was done at the end in Unreal. And uh, Unreal is really walking in Unreal Engine. Um, if it tells you anything, there is Unity and Unreal does this uh, uh, how to say it, interactive. Yeah, it's very much suspect. Let me cannibalize it and jump a little bit forward. So, uh, environment is scanned but then took a lot of time to clean it up and 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 actually these figures also scanned but with different scanner and then everything put in the in the unreal engine and it's a bit of a game element you have to pass through this hallway and go to this window to, and then when you go into the window you appear back at the beginning, but environment changes because you have more figures, sort of bodies in the space. Uh, so I'm showing it as a scan example. Then I really have silly examples. Maybe I show one. Um, okay, so I have to talk about this little bit because this promotional video for uh, the summer school but it's sort of promotional with no purpose because we're not trying to sell anything. In fact, it's more like, it's more students did it after this summer school, which I did on scanning. In the, if it tells you anything, uh, you, nobody probably knows. No one from Latvia knows where Panemune is. Uh, if, if you know Namunas, the river, it's on that river, there is a castle. Uh, 
and the castle belongs to Vilnius Art Academy. Because Vilnius, Lark, Vilnius Art Academy is one of the biggest institutional landowners in Lithuania. They own castles and other properties. So that's one of the properties of Vilnius Art Academy. And uh, I did the workshop on scanning there. And then the students did this promotional video with elevator music. This is the scanner doing what scanner is doing, scanning. And the guy is in front, it's, it's certainly me, and then it was Arturas. Arturas was in Liepai as well. I think Mari remembers him. Maybe some students you also remember. So that's the scanner, it's quite easy to use. And that's looking at the scan. And uh, then the students really scanned everything. They trespassed some burial grounds. They went into the crypts and were scanning there. I refused to go. They said it was full of strange insects. Then they tried to get glitches out of the scanner by slowly driving while scanning, but uh, no results came out. What came out is sort of mangled interior of a car. I think I could that's another thing, but this one I could got one thing. I don't know if there is anything interesting. Maybe not. Maybe this. Oh, now it's stuck. Wait. Okay, so. Uh, ah, yeah. This could be interesting because, uh, because there is one thing about the scanner. Um, the whole idea was to find a way uh, for scanner to reach a uh, certain sort of point of no return, so to speak, some paradox. Uh, so then scanner is totally confused. And one way to do it is by using mirrors. And I think I could have example if I, if I go. This one is typical example. I can play it uh, and I maybe can talk about these mirrors because because it's I, I did one project based on that because it doesn't recognize the mirror, of course. Scanner is not intelligent. We tend to uh, sort of project human intelligence on the scanner ways. Oh, scanner sees this. Oh, scanner is confused. No, scanner is not confused. Scanner doesn't see. Well, when you put the mirror, it just captures the reflection and then creates 3D. And then the way it the the, the where it positions it, it's very optical. If there is a two meter from the scanner to the mirror, uh, and then it sort of position, it positions what it sees in the mirror or what it captures from the reflection of the mirror at exactly the same distance behind, like two meters. So it recreates the object in the space where it didn't exist. And I did project, on, maybe I have an example I can show you. But this is, more cinematic example of using scanned material, using point cloud, putting sound on. And I'm very sorry because it doesn't play at the right time. Um, and the flickering of the dots, it's a nice glitch on the side of the computer. If you know what is sort of aliasing, then, then, then dot is smaller than the pixel or then it's bigger than the pixel, then you render it. So it's a nice flicker. It's not what scanner did, but that's what 3D program did with the point cloud. But it brings some life in the image. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, um, 
the sound was created later and uh, as you see it's very cinematic because it, it seems like you know it's, it's a film by using this camera movement and it's very confusing in certain cases because the line of horizon you can play with that you can you can put it under the earth and look from under the earth up and see things because things are transparent uh, it's hard to here you can see it's sort of going under the earth and then there is this building which is hard to see another example of a suspense genre I suppose scanner is good at the suspense um, okay so let me speed up shamelessly speed up but it's it has a nice tempo a nice development because things become a bit denser and a bit more painterly okay so so much of that uh, another example also using two types of scanner the Leica scanner for environment and this handheld the cheap handheld scanner for for the face and then it, it's also because it looks like real object but then of course it's not and then the, the, there are certain certain strange strange issues uh then the camera gets inside and then at certain point you lose sense is it inside or outside you know it's not so visible here but especially if you if you use uh this linear perspective or orthographic perspective then it's very hard to tell where you're looking from inside or from outside and this was about that to a certain degree but then but then it ended more conventional, sort of gravitless. Uh, there is another interesting issue, which is also not visible here, but it was, we found it, we found it. And it, it, I don't know if you know this ballerina paradox. If you don't know what ballerina paradox is, it's an optical paradox. Uh, and then at certain angle, the ballerina, when she spins, you cannot tell if she's spinning left or right. And it's the same with scans. When you position it extremely horizontally, uh, at certain point, it's hard to tell if scan is spinning left on or right. Here, it's you can tell the direction of the spin but we found it's also quite interesting it, you can certainly see it spinning but you can it's it's hard to tell because because it's also hard to tell what is behind what but this is not a good example but this is another example of what people were doing with scans um, um, uh, yes this is Sort of performative and very explosive because the data is exploded. Here, the explosion is because of usage of too many mirrors. But it sort of it goes in the loop, repeats itself. So I, I just move on. Uh, another example. Uh, don't worry, I'm almost done. Then we can maybe ask questions. Uh, so. But this is an example I wanted to show because it's probably the most conventional because it uses a scanned object like special effects in the film. There is a footage, film footage, and then there is a scanned object and then you put it into this uh, filmed world. <clears throat> and uh, if you're interested in that, in I mean, it's, it's scanned objects are very interesting. So I can show you this. Because this, you, you, you showed the video, I showed you the video of uh, students in the car uh, 
And they thought they were scanning landscape because they wanted to get the hands landscape. But then they came uh, to the lab, downloaded the scan, they saw, oh my god, there is no land, this is this crash. Yeah, now it's a bit jumpy, it doesn't play real time, but maybe I can play it for you. So, I mean, inside of the car became more interesting. But then they also filmed. They not only scanned, but they filmed, and they used this filmed material to combine. But so it's not playing real time now uh, because. But it looked like some crash, mm -hmm. and that's what they call crash. Because they are recording the film, they also recorded the sound. So it's like two parallel events. Uh, it's not from different times, it's the same sort of road trip. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, this one is quite silly. I'll show you really briefly, but this is from Technical University, and the scan was the dinosaur. There is this dinosaur park in Vilnius, and we scanned the dinosaur. I don't know why, because you can get any kind of dinosaur online. But anyway, we scanned and then they put into this animation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ah, I have example of this planetarium. So I briefly show that. So this is from planetarium. So I cannot play real time. I show you sort of a scroll, but this is not much to see. So this is almost post-apocalyptic place. Yeah, and it's stuck. Okay, that was planetarium. This is another example. Very sort of simple, basic. It's inside of a, of a bell. We scanned inside of a bell and then, and then it sort of didn't work out. And uh, Okay, so the last few things, talking about scanning, because you can scan many things by using this, uh, and I was talking about primarily uh, sort of capturing devices. Uh, optical or, or, or subsonic or ultrasonic or, you know, all kind of stuff. An MR, magnetic resonance capture. But this is a motion, motion, uh, motion capture device. It's, it scans, in this case, it really scans your body. And this is a magnetic motion capture device. And the idea is actually to capture the movement. But in this case, uh, the student, she decided to capture the static state. I mean, the effort body puts into not to move, sort of opposite thing. And then uh, on the right, you see it's extracted curve of her attempt not to move. And when you play, it's a timeline. It's there is a little dot and the dot line is a timeline. This is like, because she was there for, I don't remember, 15 minutes torturing herself. And then this is like 15 minutes off. And because she was shaking, you can see it's, it, it's I think it's, it's a stream of one sensor. I don't know, on the hand or somewhere, because you have sensors on multiple positions in the body and then, but, why I'm showing this, I'm showing this like how people use the conventional devices. And this is like, this is really artistic mind at, the, at its best, I would say, just do it totally differently. Because this prescribed way to use motion capture, you move, we capture the movement, we apply movement to some three-dimensional object or creature, avatar, and then, you know, we have animation. But in this case, you have a static curve and then, yeah, so it's quite interesting in nature, but it's not spectacular, but conceptually it was interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the things I did with Jen Min Lee, maybe the student was in, uh, 
in Lepai, maybe not. He's my Korean student. Uh, what we did, it's sort of semi-commissioned project. And it became sort of politically charged because in Germany was this Kristallnacht when they destroyed synagogues and then and then it was an attempt to commemorate and uh, somebody from the city and the city was I think Zollingen somebody came to Kaim and asked if you know if you want to do it and uh, there was some money and I said sure we do it if you can pay students so yeah they paid students not me <laughs> But I was not doing much. So students did the work, I, but I was helping them out. So idea was, okay, so we have to commemorate somehow. And there was this event, the mayor spoke, and then and what, what my student did to a certain extent together with me, because I was also helping. But this, and they wanted really presentation of the synagogue which was standing there, because what we projected on, it was a bunker. It's hard to see because it's night, but uh, in late 30s, they destroyed the synagogue and in 40s, they built the bunker. And now, but there are like, uh, it was a model of a synagogue left somewhere, in, specifically in the Wuppertal. So we went to Wuppertal, we scanned the model of synagogue, then we reconstructed that in unity and uh, Jen Min, the student, did this game. I mean, very strange game, I must say, but I didn't control. So you are inside of a synagogue and you have to climb. You don't have to jump on these platforms. You see the platforms, the blue platforms. So, and you sort of jump and you go up and go up and go up and sort of reach the God, I suppose, right? And uh, sounds simple. And the idea was, and I was there actually in the opening, the idea was, you know, people, people would put the helmet on and we project what people were doing, right? It's projected, it's a real time, it's not animation, but it's a real time stream from the helmet. Uh, so what happened? You know, it was a lady, uh, I don't know what age 60 and she really wanted to do it we put the helmet on her and she absolutely couldn't do anything she stuck in the corner and it was the same with the next person and the next person and then the next person couldn't jump and what you see and it's the opening night and i'm telling you uh maybe you're gonna be curators or something god knows and it's like how how brilliantly failed because you know it's a lot of people, right? And it's a uh, uh, the opening had also other projects. I don't know. Let's go back. Uh, but this was the key project. It, it were some other projects, but the crowd was looking at at the synagogue. And then, for most part, what crowd saw in the beginning was total failure because you know people would stuck in this life. And I was thinking, oh man, this is really this becomes a concept in its own sort of un, un, impossibility, really sort of impossibility to be in that space. And it's like we're talking about memory, you know, the like commemoration of, of all the evils. And then we try to reconstruct and try to put the balance and people were absolutely not capable. And it was like, it was getting to the point of People were like shrugging their shoulder. What is this project? What is going on on, on, on the screen? Because it was like, like, really, you cannot, uh, yeah. It's like camera is dropping down and then they cannot move. And then you see very strange corners. So then we kicked out all the, all the people who are supposed to be interacting because idea was, you know, you invite the people, they put the helmet and they do stuff. Then they kicked everybody out. They put the helmet on Jen Min, the author of the piece. And then he was playing it. And because he could navigate, he could jump, you could sort of you could look at the nicest angles. And this is I filmed when he had the helmet on. Uh, but yes, the lesson is uh I don't know what lesson is there. It depends because for me, it was also interesting to see the failure 
But if you want to have good relationship with the gallery, or in this case, I could play that because there is a mayor speaking in the beginning. Spuren, die Menschen jüdischen Glaubens in unserer Stadt und für Jan unsere can Stadt understand Rasten. everything if he is still there. Und zu so oft unsichtbar ist das, was damals vorher geschehen ist. There is a dog behind me. You can hear. Damit es eben nicht mehr unsichtbar bleibt, ist es richtig und gut, dass wir uns heute Abend am Vorabend eben jenes so bedeutsamen, so grausamen 9. November auch wieder hier versammeln. Okay, 9. 9. November. Ich danke schon jetzt all denen. So it's dark and the mayor in Zollingen. And so on and so forth. It's, it's, yeah. It's interesting in itself. This one is like a diary, but I scroll. It's like, I, I wanted to show you just for the sake of aesthetics, the schizophrenic fragmented aesthetics which I suppose represents sort of 21st century, maybe wrongly so. And then you, you, you sort of put things, you pile on top of each other, there's like Counter-Strike or something. Yes, and then, why is Counter-Strike there? Okay, and then scans again, and yeah, and so on. So, uh, that was example. Another example is practical example of, you know, what else can you do with a scan? You can do the sculpture because this is exactly what it is. It's a sculpture done using the scan. And Jens, it's it's an old project. It's uh, and the scan was done using different technology. It has been done in the, this uh, Sport University of Cologne. Sport University has people scanning. Uh, how to say shrunk in English, it's people scanning uh, cupboard. You walk into this sort of place, which is one meter by one meter by two and something meters. It has four columns and there's a laser line sort of goes down slowly. And that's how it scans you. It's a, it's a projecting laser line and then uh, recording, taking pictures. Uh, high-speed pictures, taking a lot of pictures of this laser scan sort of, and then reconstructs. So what you can do, it's exactly like 2D scanner, then, you know, the flatbed scanner, then you put your hand, the scanner moves, and then move your hand together with the scanner, and what you get, you get these long fingers, right? Everybody tried that, I suppose. If you, if you, if you move opposite direction, then the fingers get short. It was the same way here because Jens was moving. The scanner was going from top down and he was moving together the scanner. So then he got his head twisted. And then it was a nice 3D model. And the next thing he sliced the model and printed, cut it using laser cutter. He cut out on a half centimeter thick styropore and then glued it together and paint it. This is quite simple, though a lot of work, but technique was quite simple. This is an example of, this is example of the scanner scanning itself in the mirror environment. This is also a nice, nice project. This is another, another picture of that, uh, because usually you put scanner in front of something and you want to scan that thing. In this case, uh, it was also a strange place, a mirror room, and uh, you pay, I don't know, it was, when was that? You pay like one euro and you, you met mirror room. And uh, they had LED, small LED lights, which simulate the uh, universe. And then you see those little lights but what we ask not to turn lights on and we put the scanner in and scanner scanned itself and then reconstructed because these are not the images. I represented 
on the screen as an image, but this is 3D file. You can turn and all these little scans, they are 3D objects. So it multiplied the whole universe with itself as actual 3D object. Um, conceptually also very interesting because as I said, you know, scanner is not a human. It doesn't understand metaphors. I'm seeing the image. It doesn't see the image. He sees information and does what it's supposed to do, extracts 3D out of anything. So image reflection is 3D. You know, million of reflections of myself is 3D. And he sort of diligently was populating the whole universe with its own copies. This is another example, sort of graphic example of how scanner gives raw information, which what looks like a shadow is actually not a shadow, but it's a gap. Another example, and uh, I don't know. This is sort of really changing the gear because uh, I could skip this thing uh, or I could talk another 15 minutes about how are we doing with time? Because I really don't know, Maya. Well, we are out of time officially. Okay. But so uh, I, I am very interested in, uh, in this. Uh, in, uh, okay, if, uh, because if this another is... person can say yes, then we can continue. If someone says no, then we can also go to the questions. Yes. We have a yes. So <laughs> you bribed him. Okay. <laughs> this is the part which I like because it's more philosophical and less practical because, you know, what is this scanning in general and uh, uh, how, because I already mentioned in the beginning, this eye and the brain thing. And I sometimes do exercises in alone because I also teach sort of drawing class and in the drawing class, Sometimes you close your eyes and try to reconstruct things. And because I have this metaphor of a scanner, how a scanner does, and some people do as well. And how do you, how do you build? How do you, where does it come from, this image, when you close your eyes? You know, what, how, do you, how do you know? Because if you, if you use the metaphor of computer, there is information if in your brain, right? But what is that thing which goes and finds it? How does it know? You know, to imagine that, that the apple, you close your eyes, you see the apple. How does it damn know where it is information about apple? Because it's not like librarian, right? Some smart librarian goes and, ah, the apple is there. Okay. No, I mean, it cannot be intelligent because it's a different level. Or it's, yeah. So anyway, it's an interesting subject. Uh, but... Going back on Earth, it, it, I also interested in, in artist diaries, and then and Delacroix did interesting diaries, and using himself as a scanning device. He's just looking around, and what he sees, he draws and writes, and there's like page after page, and he knew it. He was was acting like a squirrel. Uh, he was acting like a squirrel because he was collecting everything just in case. You know, I may use it, I may need it. I just, you know, so everything which is in front of him, you would draw and write. So that was quite interesting. And then, yes, uh, I forgot about this actually, but um, this is another subject. This is totally different, but also related. It's It's totally social thing. It's like, you know, it's a relationship between me as a social entity and, in this case, Vilnius Art Academy as social organization. And, no, it's not me, it's a student, I think. It's, a, it's I, it's closer to the student because it's actually, it, it, because you have this. Um, there is a hierarchy, but behind hierarchy is an interesting, interesting control mechanisms. And in most cases, I realized uh, the control mechanism rely on scanning procedure. In this case, uh, institution scans you and gets numeric representation of you and then knows what to do with you. It's from, I think it's, I took it from one student or, or somewhere and I, idea was, okay, like how many credit hours you have and what grades you get. So it's, it's the same scanning mechanism. 
I'm sending something, I'm forcing you, uh, because laser doesn't force, laser sends the signal, gets something back. In this case, I force you to get the information, sort of I'm, I'm squeezing you to get the knowledge, and then these are the parameters, and then I create image of you. Are you a good student or are you bad student? And then where are you failing? So the topology of your brain. Are you good at language? Are you good at this? It's also interesting. Uh, the, the social scanning. And then this is the, the scanning, scanning action performed on me by Liepai University. I mean, I supposed to do self-scanning because they send this thing and I have to scan myself and put the, put the activities performed. They have to go back in time and then, you know, remember, scan, memory and provide information. I didn't do that, so anyway, but this is also interesting for this metaphor of scanning. This is more typical stuff. I skipped it, this sort of scanned face and then printed out. Uh, uh, going into popular fields of, uh, in this case, Hollywood films, and this is Terminator, Judgment Day. And if you remember what uh, Terminator was doing, Terminator was scanning. He was not seeing, he was scanning. And this is example of how Terminator was acting in the world. He scanned, he saw the guy, and uh, this is like, in the yellow square, there is this information of a scan. Visual information is a male, height, uh, six feet, one inch tall, weight, 212 pounds, endomorph, whatever. Because if you remember the scene, he was looking, he needed some leather jacket and he scanned the guy, he fit his parameters and then he beat crap out of him and took the jacket. Um, yes. Um, so going deeper into the woods, uh, and these are really last three slides I have. Uh, I think so, yes. Uh, because, you know, if you think about scanning, literature is also very good. And Rob Grier, uh, if you read this Jalouse, it's a very interesting novel. And he plays with language because jalousie is jealousy and it's also this uh, jalousie which you see through. And it's about the sort of jealousy because the husband was suspecting wife was cheating and he was looking through jalousie and it was, but why I'm talking about scanning because uh, certain parts are very, it's very accurate description of space. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if, yeah, because this is one example. He really describes in the second row, so right before I left there, it would be 22 threes. And then the kind of, there is another description even better about the shadow, how shadow moves based on time. And this is also Rob Grier sort of scanning space and describing. And it's also almost like auto, automatic. And another writer who was doing similar things, almost like, uh, autistic precision of like describing detail. It was, uh, uh, what was that? Um, I forgot the name, <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, so there is another one going back in time, uh, Samuel Beckett. How did I forget him? Samuel Beckett was because if uh, some of them like the lost ones, the lost ones, that's his play. And the title is The Lost Ones. He has description of the temperature change in the room. And it's like very precise. It drops down at a certain point to this. And yeah. Uh, anyway, so scanning and describing, sort of getting results as you can do in literature, and it's quite interesting. And uh, uh, yes. And of course, uh, Balzac was spending a lot of time describing what he sees. And this is like Ferragus, Chief of the Devil Runs. There are passages, I just pick one. He, he describes the, the Paris. But it's not just sort of scanner-like description, objective. He describes, he sort of describes what he sees, but he also passes the judgment. So it's, it's a bit 
sort of subjective scanning in, which is also interesting uh, because it's a secondary action, what association it brings the, the space. Um, Oh yeah, and this was the last slide that I have an answer. So what we can shall do because because okay, I have an answer for the other group of people uh, to prescribing them what to do, but not in this case. So that's it. Now I stop to share. Ah, and I see some Lithuanians there. How did they got in here? What is Gilvinas doing and, and Margarita? <laughs> I'll talk to them on Friday, in fact. But anyway, that's the end of my preaching. Now it's time for questions and hopefully some answers. I see seven entities in chat uh, and entities He's lost in his own echo chamber. That's me. I'm having a delay. Any? Okay, we lost him. Oh, okay. I think Jill cannot hear us. Oh, I was talking to myself all the time. <laughs> no, just, just for one moment there. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, do we have a question? Uh, I, I think I have a question. I think I'm also... Yeah, you can hear me. That's good. Yes, yes, yes. Um, perfectly. Yeah, I uh, in all the examples that were shown, the resolution of these worlds that have been scanned has been quite primitive in a way because you're scanning such a huge area and kind of reducing this. But are there uh, ways to go to uh, insanely high resolutions of the actual surface of an object to really get to that the true surface of an object? Yes. Uh, so. Uh, you can do that with handheld scanner because handheld scanner, the purpose of handheld scanner to really to, to track the object, the, the surface in high quality, but then you deal with smaller areas. Because what I showed, uh, these point clouds, it's, it's done with so this Leica scanner, which is diffused. It's not high definition scan, but it covers larger area than the held, handheld scanner. With handheld scanner, you, you can have a million points for the small area, then resolution is very high. The Flyka scanner, you have the same millions, but for like, you know, 15, 20 meters area. So of course the resolution goes down. So yeah, it's possible, but then you cannot have high resolution for like architecture because then it would really be not just gigabytes but i don't know terabytes of data and then processing of data would be almost meaningless because you wouldn't have computer to process it but for like up to human size you can do you can use the handheld and then then it's quite accurate you can you can go into the level of sort of skin pores if you want because uh, because the resolution, the nominal resolution, the, if, you go, if, if you set it up to the highest possible uh, setup, uh, for this uh, Einscan shining, it's 0 0.1 millimeter. So we're talking, you know, sub-millimeter level. So uh, then it should support, I mean, we never reached that. Uh, we, we went up to or it went down to maybe millimeter, or, you know, like two thirds of a millimeter, or maybe even a half, but never 0.1 millimeter. So yeah, we should try. But I bought a new one uh, for KM. I haven't tried it yet. We'll see. But uh, there are other questions on chat, and Margarita asked me, "Can you give example?" To how can scanning be used for performative purposes? Are there any artists that have used it for their work? Uh, not many, but what you did in NIDA, I consider as performative example, actually, uh, because to do like real time, real time 
walking in the scan and talking, I, I, I think it's performative. Maybe you didn't consider that as performance at that time, but it, it, it was performance because, yeah, it was real-time experience. Uh, other than you, and who was, who, was, who was the guy? I forgot his name. It was two of you. Um, it, some older students uh, did performances with scanner, either scanning as performance or presenting uh, the outcomes of the scan as performance. Uh, it wasn't Panemune done by now graduated students from Vilnius Art Academy. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't think, I expected actually when we did this NIDA thing, uh, because it was really inviting for performance. Because why? Because it was so much scan. I mean, it was so much sand and not much anything else. It's almost like, you know, what do you do? You, you, like you, you perform on the sand, like on the stage. But yeah, if you want to do it, it's great because you would be the first one. I mean, to a certain extent, you are already the first one. So that was the question um, from Margarita with my answer. Uh, and then another question from Jan, beautiful, how technology comes between us. I think Gilles, Gilles cannot hear us. I cannot hear you, but I can read you now. <laughs> I don't think it's a question. I think it's a statement. And what can I say? Maybe Jan wants to elaborate on his statement. If Jan is still there. I don't think Jan is there. Okay, we lost Jan. Uh, Maybe he just doesn't want to speak. And I think this was from the time when you were showing us some video and the sound was quite loud. Oh, we were, we yes. were trying to ask you to, uh, <laughs> you know, adjust it. So that's what the time was. Ah, uh, yeah. The another question from Peteris. Uh, yes, if you encountered uh, uh, low resolution. I mean, everybody can read, I suppose, because you put it in the, in the, in the chat. Um, yes, uh, I can tell a little bit about that. And I don't know, it's, it's strange because I don't want to use the word uh, uh, fashion. But I mean, it, it feels like this, this level of intensity when it comes to sort of energy and interest and then suddenly it evaporates, but it was. Like when Friedrich Kirchner was doing that, I think seven, eight years ago, it was a lot of people trying this DUI scanning devices. The same time people were like doing this, the print 3D printers. It was like everybody doing them. In Kahayam, we have a lot of students just building and everybody was so happy. And this is a, this is a new future. We're independent from corporations and it was great sort of love in the air, but now it's all gone. I don't know, I, I cannot really see because, because it's, it's quite strange. And, and, and Jan was also resonating on that in his remark about this technology. It, and I, I can talk about KHM. I mean, people, what they like now, it's, it's this uh, less technology and more sort of immediate expression. So drawing is very popular, painting is very popular, and we're talking about, you know, the media school, um, which is interesting. So when it comes to devices, I can only tell about, you know, my experiences in either Kunzokshule for Median or in general, uh, when I come across the gallery art or sort of reading what is going on. So. Yeah, I don't see that much attempts to do DUI because another thing I try to develop is is sort of hand that handmade scanners using all kind of sensors and using maybe Arduino board, to, so, but but it a bit evaporated, vanished because to to, to certain extent because uh, regular scanners went down in price and the examples I showed. Examples they showed are a bit corporate examples because most of the most of the 
uh, most of the art as I showed, they use high-end commercial scanners, which are sort of avail available to the artists right now. You get funding, you, you, you rent this high-end scanner and you do, so you don't bother, you don't waste time on, or, you know, I use word waste, but you don't spend time on building the device you work with, you just use what's there and focus on artistic expression without thinking, you know, maybe, maybe there is something, you know, predetermined, then I use this commercial device, maybe I don't have, maybe I'm using commercial voice, you know, and, and the thing is, the thing is that when you look at these beautiful scans, this is a commercial voice because these are high-end scanners and that's what they produce and you cannot tweak too much. So I think the question is very appropriate of this, you know, do-it-yourself things because in that case, to a certain extent, you can control the voice. Uh, yeah. <laughs>